it is almost impossible to keep up with all of the news regarding Marjorie Taylor Greene, a congresswoman from Georgia's 14th congressional district. Last week, we went over all of the most bizarre conspiracy theories that I thought she believed, but believe it or not, there's even more conspiracy theories that may be more bizarre than the ones we already knew about. For example, she once suggested that a space laser controlled by Jewish elites may have been responsible for the California wildfires. She also suggested that Ruth Bader Ginsburg died and was replaced with a body double. So, of course, you know, Trump wouldn't be able to name her replacement. Now, I think that that conspiracy theory was disproven last year. But nonetheless, the fact that she believes these things leads me to think that there's no conspiracy theory that she wouldn't fall for. And you already see some leftists online trying to catfish her in a way by uh, sending her DMs through Twitter saying, listen, I've got some evidence that's going to lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton. Like, she's very trollable because she will believe anything. She's a rube. Like, anything that has a hint of conspiracy to it or um, anti-Semitism, it seems like she'll gobble it up. It's it's honestly sad, especially because, like, we're not talking about some random individual who's lost. This is a policymaker. You can't function as a competent policymaker if you don't have, like, a bare minimum level of intelligence and you're that far gone. And she hasn't even been in Congress for a month and she already can't even coexist with her colleagues because Cori Bush asked her to wear a mask since they're kind of neighbors, their offices are close to each other, and that led to her berating Cori Bush and Cori Bush then feeling forced to move her office because this person is very clearly a lunatic. If you can't even react like a grown-up to somebody asking you to wear a mask and you berate them, then I mean, I don't, I don't blame Cori Bush. I would want to move my office away from her too. Now, in a way, I think that even though like what she represents is utterly terrifying, Democrats can use this to their advantage if they're smart, if they're savvy, if they're disciplined in their messaging. And what they need to do is make her the face of the Republican Party because like it or not, she kind of is an accurate representation of a significant portion of the GOP's base. All of their years of, you know trying to appeal to racists using dog whistles, you know, conspiracy theories, uh, playing loose with the facts, has culminated in this, a possible takeover of their own party with lunatics. Now, thankfully, it does seem as if Democrats are planning to make her the face of the Republican Party, and I think it would behoove them to do this because they want to turn people off. Like, overall, this will make Republicans more popular with a certain sector of society, but most normal Americans are going to be turned off by this. And thankfully, what Marjorie Taylor Greene is doing is kind of causing this civil war slash existential crisis to occur within the Republican Party, at least when it comes to Georgia's Republican Party, because they're currently panicking, trying to find some way to distance themselves from this lunatic who's already been legitimized by Donald Trump. Donald Trump called her a rising star. So the question is, like, what, what do we do after we spent years appealing and catering to these people like we never thought that they would take over our party but here we are so the question is what do we do and uh this story is laid out beautifully by mark caputo of politico who writes the georgia gop is tearing itself apart in a civil war it lost two senate seats in an ill-fated january runoff election and the once republican suburbs in metro atlanta the most populous part of the state have bolted toward the democratic side now it's contending with another budding public relations catastrophe representative marjorie taylor green the newly elected congresswoman whose extremist beliefs and promotion of bizarre conspiracy theories have rocketed her to national notoriety. The calls for censure and her removal from Congress don't appear to have damaged her standing in her conservative North Georgia district and may have even strengthened the so-called QAnon congresswoman there for now. She tweeted Friday that she raised $1.6 million off all the controversy and on Saturday told her 300,000 followers she just had a chat with the support of Donald Trump, the former president who has referred to her as a future Republican star. This is what a nightmare scenario looks like. Yeah, I bet. And to that I say, you've made your bed, so now lie in it. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Try to appeal to lunatics. Don't be surprised when they end up taking over your party. Because that's exactly what's happening. The Republican Party is being taken over by complete lunatics. It's not just Marjorie Taylor Greene. Laura Boebert is another member of Congress 
who supports QAnon or was subscribed to that conspiracy theory. Um, and she, during the Capitol insurrection, literally tweeted out Nancy Pelosi's location, presumably because she wanted Nancy Pelosi to be targeted by the insurrectionists. Like, these folks are deranged, more so than the already deranged members of the GOP. I mean, when you think of Ted Cruz and uh, Louis Gomer, Jim Inhofe, you think, these people, like, you can't get worse than them. But then Laura Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene show up, and it's like, okay, so I guess that the bar is even lower than I thought. So, um, you know, I don't know how this is going to play out. Is there going to be a civil war in the Republican Party? I really don't know, because when we saw the way that the Republican Party establishment handled the Tea Party, they kind of did it in a pretty strategic way. Like, they didn't necessarily reject the Tea Party outright. They kind of co-opted that movement and embraced it. Not that it was like a genuine grassroots movement because this was funded by billionaires like the Koch brothers, but they kind of like embraced them and adopted some of the rhetoric and just overall shifted further to the right to accommodate the Tea Party. Um, so what's going to happen? Like, are they going to shift further to the right to accommodate these QAnon conspiracy theorists? I mean, in theory, uh, QAnon should be done because everything that Q said was wrong. Trump is out of power. He didn't arrest people. Uh, Biden was sworn in. So that should be done. But I mean, when it comes to these sorts of conspiracy minded individuals who makes Alex Jones seem reasonable in comparison, what are they going to do? I mean, I would think that they're probably going to do what they did with the Tea Party and just embrace this element of their party, shift a little bit further to the right just to accommodate these people. Because how many Republicans already signed on to Donald Trump's scam to claim that the election was stolen and how many voted to not certify the election results? So, so they're already kind of doing it. Like, they're already kind of shifting to the right and becoming authoritarian to accommodate folks like this. So, uh, And it's not just to accommodate folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene specifically. To be clear, it's to accommodate the GOP's increasingly extremist base. So what is this going to lead to? I don't know. Will she be censured? Don't know. Will she be expelled? I don't know. Should she? Uh, absolutely, because if you don't even accept democracy itself, if you refuse to certify the results of the election and you're anti-democracy, you shouldn't serve in a democratic body, Will she, though? Don't think so. I don't think so. And if she's not, then Democrats would be foolish to not use this as an opportunity to paint her as the face of the Republican Party to try to turn off more people. Because, I, I mean, the Republican Party is already extremist, so I don't know what more examples you need. Uh, but if this doesn't turn people off to the Republican Party, then uh, America, as we know it, is in a lot worse shape than previously thought. So uh, I'm sure that there's going to be more conspiracy theories about Marjorie Taylor Greene that come out. And I'm not going to lie, I'm really enjoying this story. Uh, any news surrounding her, I'm gobbling that shit up because it's entertaining. Like, it's sad because it hurts democracy, but at the same time, it is kind of nice to see everything we predicted come to fruition, even if we were hoping to be wrong. Like, when we said years ago that the Republicans are playing a dangerous game by pandering to these types of folks and it's going to come back to bite them, it is nice to see us be proven right even if that comes at a cost. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how they handle this. I, I just, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm too cynical. I, I think that they're going to end up embracing folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene. They're just, they're too far gone. The party is, is, I don't know how you deal with this party. It's fucking insane. Tremendous, 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 tremendous